Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about how to fade pitted scars. These types of scars have a depression to them, meaning when you run your hands over the surface of the skin, there is an indentation. These scars are due to sudden loss of collagen in the deeper layers of the skin as a result of inflammation from either acne, picking your skin, or chicken pox. Pitted scars can take on a variety of different shapes. The most common is an ice pick scar. This is a small V-shaped tract that goes deep into the skin, often seen after acne. Then you have boxcar scars, which are broader and have sharp edges. These often come about after chicken pox. And then lastly, you have rolling scars. They have an undulating surface to them as a result of a fibrous tract of scar tissue tethering down to the deeper layers of the skin. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be covering the different types of treatments and things that you can do to improve the appearance of pitted scars. But what can you do to prevent getting them in the first place? If you have acne, make sure that the acne is being treated. Any active acne that you have that goes untreated has the potential to go on to form these types of scars. And don't pick your skin. Picking causes scarring, whether it be picking your acne or just picking your skin because you have a lot of anxiety. I have a video about skin picking disorder, so if you are coping with that, make sure you check that video out. And then of course, make sure you protect your skin from the sun with a broad spectrum sunscreen and through sun protective behaviors because UV rays from the sun delay healing and can put you more at risk for scar formation. Aside from those preventative things, remember, these types of scars are due to the sudden loss of collagen in the deeper layers of the skin. So one thing that you can incorporate into your skincare routine to boost up collagen and improve the appearance of these, soften the edges of things like those box car scars, is to incorporate a retinoid into your skincare routine. It may be a prescription retinoid that you get from a doctor, but remember, now in the States, you can get a retinoid over the counter, and y'all know I've talked about it in numerous videos, it's a dapolene gel. Long-term use of a retinoid can improve collagen production and smooth out the edges of pitted scars. Now, what ends up happening is a lot of people with acne, they stop using treatments after their acne is cleared. But this is one treatment that behooves you to continue using even after the acne has gone away. Not only will it help in improving the final appearance of these pitted scars, but if you have post-acne marks, hyperpigmentation, redness, continuing to use your retinoid treatment can improve the final appearance of those marks. Now the second thing to consider introducing into your skincare routine is going to be a hydroxy acid. Alpha hydroxy acids, namely glycolic acid, can help increase skin cell turnover and ultimately smooth out the edges of scars. Beta hydroxy acid, namely salicylic acid, also can help in increasing skin cell turnover and remodeling of that tissue and improving the final appearance of a scar. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the details of hydroxy acids and how to incorporate them into your routine. Remember, I've got videos explaining how to use them, which ones to use depending on your skin type, so check those videos out. But I'm gonna share with you guys a product that I think is particularly beneficial for people who are dealing with depressed scars from acne, and that is the Peach Slices Acne Exfoliating Toner. This has 2% salicylic acid in it, which helps not only in improving the appearance of scars, but also will help continue to impart ongoing acne control for you. Another benefit. This product also has glycolic acid, so you get a mix of alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids in this product. Uh, very simple to use. You can incorporate it into your routine once a day, twice a day. Uh, you can use it in a routine that includes retinoid. You wanna use a retinoid at nighttime and the hydroxy acids in the morning. And then of course, sunscreen. So those are things that you can do in your skincare routine that can help improve the final appearance of these scars and lessen their appearance overall. But you guys, there is no product on the market that will ever actually remove these scars. What you want is to see a board certified dermatologist because there are procedures that can definitely improve the appearance of these. And I'm gonna get into what those are. First of all, a chemical peel. Chemical peels, they go much deeper to really begin to encourage better collagen production and smoothing out of those 
atrophic pitted scars. The other advantage of getting a chemical peel is that it can impart ongoing acne control and it can improve those post acne marks, redness and hyperpigmentation. Chemical peels allow for better penetration of your skincare products. Radio frequency is a type of energy that can be delivered to the deeper layers of the skin to stimulate healing pathways and neocollagenesis, ultimately smoothing out the surface of the skin. The advantage of radio frequency is that it's safe to use in all skin tones. People who have deeper skin tones, we have to be very conservative with certain treatments because they come with a greater risk of what's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Obviously, when you're going in to get scarring and post-acne marks treated, the last thing you want is more discoloration. Radio frequency is a great option in all skin tones and can have a skin tightening effect, ultimately smoothing out the surface of the skin and lessening the appearance of of depressed atrophic scars. Radio frequency can be paired with microneedling. Microneedling creates little channels of injury that stimulate healing pathways and collagen production. And then simultaneously, you have the delivery of that radio frequency energy deep down in the skin to really help with boosting up collagen production and smoothing out the surface of the skin. You may consider speaking to your dermatologist about having a course of Accutane, otherwise known as isotretinoin. This is a pill that you take by my mouth that is the only acne treatment that can basically effectively cure the acne for many people, stop it in its tracks, and induce permanent remission. Accutane is a medication that can induce durable remission of the acne and can help in improving scars. Now you may have heard that if you are on Accutane, you can't have any kind of procedure done for six to 12 months after stopping the Accutane because there is some thought that the skin is more at risk for healing with certain types of scars in that window of time. However, newer data and newer studies suggests that that is not likely. Some providers will go ahead and treat the scars while the patient is still on Accutane, but it's not necessarily true that you can't have procedures while you are on Accutane or shortly after Accutane. And it depends on the type of procedure as well. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I do get questions about how long after stopping Accutane can you get this type of procedure or that type of procedure. Always talk to your dermatologist because it depends on your skin type, the nature of the procedure and their overall experience and comfort level, what they're gonna advise you on. In dermatology, we love to use lasers and there are a few lasers that can be helpful for treating pitted scars. You have ablative lasers. These include CO2 lasers and Erby Yang. Those are two types of ablative lasers. And the way these work is by delivering energy that targets water inside of cells, generating a lot of heat and vapor and that targets the top layer, the superficial layer of the skin, as well as the deep layer of the skin. And then what you get is shrinkage of collagen and new collagen being formed. The end result is smoothing out of pitted scars, better overall skin texture, you get a shrinkage of pores and just overall improvement in basically skin texture, smoothness, and skin tightening. However, because these impact both the top layer and the deep layer, they have some more side effects in comparison to non-ablative lasers, which I'll talk about in a moment. Ablative lasers can lead to a lot of discomfort, uh, discoloration, either hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation, and also uh, can cause a reactivation of herpes virus if you're prone to cold sores. And of course, there are some things that we can do to minimize these risks. Uh, like pre-treat with hydroquinone to reduce the risk of hyperpigmentation. Obviously give the patient medication to suppress reactivation of herpes virus if they have a history of cold sores. Ablative lasers are used far more conservatively in people with deeper skin tones because so they are more at risk for healing with hyperpigmentation. That's not to say, however, that if you have a deeper skin tone, these types of lasers are completely off limits. But an alternative is a non-ablative laser. These just deliver the energy to the deeper layers of the skin. They don't impact the top layer of the skin. They have a shorter downtime. Now, the non-ablative lasers, they are helpful mostly for the rolling scars. They don't really address at all the box car or the ice pick scars. Now, as I said in the beginning, most people have a few different types of pitted scars, especially people who had acne that healed with pitted scars. They're gonna have ice pick, you know, maybe some rolling scars. So you may 
uh, most likely you need a mix of different types of treatments to target these different things. Speaking of mix, you actually can use both non-ablative and ablative lasers using the non-ablative lasers to a more widespread area and then using ablative lasers to spot areas, areas that are, you know, maybe would benefit more from a more intense treatment. Then you have subcision. This is a great procedural option for rolling scars. Remember in the beginning of the video, I explained how rolling scars have that undulating surface due to the fact that there is a fibrous cord of scar tissue tethering the skin down. And what subcision does is a needle is introduced into the skin to break up that cord and allow for the skin to lift up and smooth out. Now for a box car and ice pick scars, Another potential procedural option is a punch excision. What is that? Well, we take a, a punch biopsy tool that basically is like a little circular cookie cutter to punch down and pull out that, that V-shaped indentation or the area of scar tissue under that box, box car shape and remove it. And then that actually stimulates healing pathways that fill in collagen and smooth out the surface of the skin. Now, whether or not you are a candidate for an excision of your scar depends on the scar location. Some areas of the body are not the best in terms of healing. And the last thing we want is to further scar you with another procedure. I bet you didn't know this, but filler can actually be a great option for depressed scars because of two reasons. First of all, just space filling, it occupies that space, smoothing out the surface of the skin, but it also induces collagen production, neocollagenesis, which is what you want in terms of improving the look of scars and smoothing out scar edges for those box car and rolling scars. I just wanna take a moment to remind you guys that when it comes to treating these scars, it's not a cookbook approach. There is no one size fits all approach. Depending on your skin tone, certain procedures are maybe not as great of a choice. So likely what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna get some kind of combination of different procedures that's gonna give you the best results. You can start to imagine how you could go in for uh, radio frequency microneedling, maybe have some filler placed to enhance that build on that collagen production, and of course, space fill. You may also be getting some peels. So you can see how it's likely going to be a combination of procedures that's going to get you the best results. Lastly, a procedure that is definitely worth pursuing, it tends to be very inexpensive. Cost, it's a cost-effective procedure, great for all skin types actually, and that is TCA Cross. This works really well for ice pick scars, boxcar scars, now I have a video all about the details of TCA Cross and I'm gonna put it on the next slide for you to watch if you are interested in that procedure. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.